Hi, this is Jim, and I'm the New Hampshire Rock Guy, and we're out on another one of my mining adventures. Wow, look at this spar here. It's just falling out of the mine walls, and there's so much more to see. Let's go. One, two, three, four. Feel all six sides of the tourmaline crystal. What would be west into the Connecticut River Valley and the mountains of Vermont. World-class barrel crystals, both aquamarine and golden. If you look hard enough, you'll find something that's basic. Yeah. Get ready for a fantastic journey of this incredible mine. Okay, this, this is very typical uh, just to keep your fly rock down so you didn't be ruining everything else around it. When you're blasting? Yeah. If you're, you know, most of them were out of nothing in the open or either underground, so you were confined. But if you had something like you say, there were a lot of these around the top, Mm -hmm. Well, gee, you got a blast and that goes out, you've got to be off at a distance. Otherwise, you're going to be dodging flying rock and so forth. Because, of course, a lot of guys loaded. Back when they started, a lot of people didn't have the background. And they load heavy, and that really created everybody heading for cover. <laughs> yeah, so we're here with, uh, you're a blaster, right? You, uh, right, right. Well, uh, what, learning... The hard way. Learning the hard way. But I, you've done but, it. Yeah. But I did, yes. Quite a lot of billing. And underground is a well to uh, surface. But the thing is, I just never loaded heavy. I'd rather be light. I got little bigger pieces, but then they got better. The mica wasn't fractured so much either. Ah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas the spar, it generally didn't matter too much because most of your spar was ground up anyway. No. So the, these are just discarded or used yeah, tires, tires. Yeah. and as you said, the, the holes were put in so that a cable could be fed yeah, through. Was, right, they'd set them all in and they're all in the band, and, there was, and that there's, was about, there's a lot of weight to one of these. Oh, when you stretch that out, I said they're about, at least about 12 by 12 feet, wow. and you carry it in the front of your backhoe, a loader, and set an end down, and then kind of go ahead slowly and because you can't break up your wires oh, that you've already got you know, loaded. Be very careful. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, the, just the idea of blasting. So, um, I've, I've, <clears throat> my knowledge is that there was different uh, grades of dynamite, like twenty percent or sixty percent or forty. Most of it for the general uh, pegmatite, so for forty percent dynamite, and I used to. When I dealt with the fellows that came up from North Carolina, the first thing they asked me, they said, what percent dynamite did you use? You know, and I'm not making fun of their, their droll, but that would come into the picture. Well, I use 40% dynamite. Pretty sure if you're talking with them, you'd be in a talk like and that. And you'd be talking like <laughs> that <laughs> dynamite. <laughs> oh, that's but <laughs> they came up and they operated after my uncle and his partner ended up in the army going to Europe and <clears throat> this group came up from Spruce Pine, North Carolina and leased the mine, the sergeant mine, and they were operating for part, the latter part of the war up at the sergeant, then they left and they were both up at the sergeant mine in Claremont and they were down beside the river at the Smith mine that was down along the uh, river that came I don't, to yeah, I don't know that mine is it's in Claremont, right? But closer to the Connecticut. Yeah, it's it's down in um, in the area. Well, if from the Sergeant Mine, if you just went off through the woods down to the right and down till you got to the uh, God, I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of the name of the river now, but offhand, that's where it was, and it flows all the way over through Claremont to the Connecticut River. Okay, okay, um, that. Uh, period of time when the um, gentlemen from South Carolina, Spruce Point, are operating, when the war ended, did they just stop mining? Did it come to an abrupt end no. or did it continue? No, no, it went on, I think the last extent that the war ended, what, in 45? Apart, I mean, the actual, a lot of it, a lot of it was still going on, the segments of both the, both armies. Yeah, not well, the, you got the, not e the east and west uh, right, but uh, some of them in the area, like the Japanese and those people out in the islands, they didn't get the message that the war was over and they were still fighting. Oh. It was causing problems for the, the Americans 
to, we're not fighting, we're trying to stay back and not get involved because... Yeah, today we could text everybody and it'd right. be over within minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but these, these fellows had, had gone into the jungles and hidden and then they weren't coming out and they were still ready to, to fight. So the need for, mica was a strategic mineral. It was right. needed for a lot of war purposes. Um, we mentioned one about uh, the uh, lubrication in, in, in a crankcase oil. Um, but it was used a lot in electronic no components, electronics, right. huge amount, because electronics were coming of age, right. aircraft were coming, were, were maturing right. and it coming was. of age. So uh, mica is used in a lot of different places. And I, I even believe that um, in the early handsets, uh, what we spoke into had a piece of mica, and that's mm -hmm. what took our, our acoustic waves and turned it into the electrical waves. Right. So it's uh, indispensable, it's in your microwave, it's in your hair dryer, um, it's in every wall of your house in joint compound, right. because as, again, mm -hmm. when you grind it up, it's an incredible lubricant, just like graphite, right? The lubricant well, you use for right. very, very similar. Yeah. Um, but there's very fine ones that put in paint. <clears throat> the automobile, when they had that metallic paint, yeah. a lot of it was mica. Mica was, that made it. Yeah, that's one of the big, big uses. Right. Uh, did you visit, or it might have been Dale Johnson told me about the grinding plant down in Medford, Massachusetts, and the guy that came out looking like the Tin Man every day. Did you see that personally too? Right. Or? They, they were, the one we took our mica to was down near Springfield, Mass. Oh. Just before you take one of the roads there to the right and head up toward the Mohawk Trail going off yeah, in that yeah, direction. Yeah, out to west, yeah. <clears throat> going out west, right. And I remember the guys coming out of that. At the end of the day, there happened to be a pond right near the grinding plant. Those guys, like you said, they didn't have a t-shirt or anything else on. They'd been working in the grinding plant, and they were like silver from here up. <laughs> That's and, amazing. And they'd go down and go in the water, and there'd be a glaze of purple on the surface of the water. just. From, from what came off of them. What came off of them. Oh, that's um, and then did, then did they have shower on site too, or did they just wash they, off? Oh in no, I think they had pond. a shower on site. They generally could go into a building or something and wash off, but the big problem was, a lot of them still didn't wear their mask like they should, and then you had that silicosis problem. Right, right. Just like you know. A anything that you breathe the dust in long enough, I'm sure, but you know, certainly there's the coal mining we hear about it, and um, in the mica uh, you hear about it, and in beryllium. But we're going to talk about beryllium in our next segment mm. because uh, we're getting close to the end of this one. So let's just conclude about uh, your experience of dynamiting. Um, you, 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 you not only have done it. Um, in the mining area, but you you would just blast. You know, somebody had a rock in the way, well, and they needed to blast in, it. Typical around here in New England, you know, we grow rocks, and they come up in the soil, and they get out in your field, and they jam up your machinery and so forth. And so you go around, drill them, and shoot them. But that's where you'd use this more, because you didn't it. want to spread it out over the field, because then you end up picking up a lot of small rocks. Right. Oh yeah. And then. And if you plowed it, and of course in the plowing, well, you get these things are like glacial erratics. I mean, it's probably part of a ledge. Right. But also, it got uncovered. It got scoured off. This one was bigger and probably This was perfect for, for piling up the uh, the mats. Well, it was it's good. It's a great storage place. Shut it over and not have it get so, but right now, I don't know. That one's probably not in great condition. But it would work. You'd have to yeah. do a little work on it. And just one last thing while we're he standing here, John. This, uh, this to so, me, is a well cover, right? That was the size they was chiseled out by hand. <laughs> so for, just for the size of the bucket and then to get a bucket up through. But also, you could drop your bucket down the well on the end of a rope. Yeah. Get it to tip over, fill with water, and then pull it up. You could have a... a one of those winch like things built, yeah, you know, crank. Yeah, yeah. You know. But uh, so these would be called hand dug wells, and yeah. it was a very common way to get water. Right. Um, so they were 15, 20 feet, whatever it took to, to then fill up and, and have a reserve. Um, I, how long might it take to get a nice hole like that in a rock like that? Do you have any idea? Well, that's probably more of uh, mica 
shale. Like a shale, a schist type rock. Um, so that's a little bit easier than a granite. Bit e right. yeah, a you lot have, easier. You have to chip at it, you know, not be in a hurry. Otherwise, you'd end up with two pieces and have to start over. I <laughs> wouldn't want to do that. Well, thank you very much again for this wonderful knowledge. Uh, it's Jim Pacora of uh, the Mike of Mine Schoolhouse, That's and right. you can find us on YouTube at Pacora's Mike of Mine Schoolhouse. Actually, if you simplest thing is just use hashtag Pacora Mike of Mine Schoolhouse all together, right. and then you'll get a whole series of the videos come up and, right. and uh, the channel as well. So thank you, John, um, yeah. and we're going to talk a little bit more in our third right. segment, yeah. and uh, we'll take you and tour around a little bit more of what we've got here. Well, if you want to see that dynamite